Hello, welcome again to Outside of the Box. I am Ben Poplin. This week on Outside of the Box, we're going to talk a little bit of KSU baseball. We're also going to talk some major deals happening in the MLB. We'll also break down the AFC NFC championships, give a tribute to Joe Paterno as an unfortunate passing, and we'll also talk about Super Bowl prediction. Just keep it here. This is Outside the Box. Junior catcher Ronnie Freeman right here at Kennesaw State University is being named as one of the top MLB prospects. He's going to be looked at by several MLB teams, and I think that he's going to go – I think he's going to go professional, Billy. What teams do you think are looking at him right now? I'm really thinking the Padres, the Cubs, and possibly even the Mets might be looking at him for this year's draft. We're talking about a guy that hit 42 straight games last year. That was the longest streak in the nation, and he's continuing into a 15-game streak coming into this season. He also – was in the tops in batting average, hitting 392 last season, 487 on base percentage, and also a 622 slugging percentage. So the sky's the limit with Ronnie Freeman. And he was also recently named Kennesaw State captain along with Peyton Hart, the third baseman for the Owls. Moving on to MLB news now. Jorge Posada, the catcher for the New York Yankees, is calling it quits after an amazing 17 year career donning the pinstripes. Uh, what do you guys think? What legacy does he leave? And also, is he a Hall of Famer in your book? Definitely a Hall of Famer. I mean, 17 years, that is a huge commitment. And you know that I'm just diehard New York, so. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I think Jorge will also be in the Hall of Fame in the next five years. He has a great career, great relationship with Joe Torre, his former manager. And, uh, you know, I think he'll probably stay in the Yankees front office and, uh, you know, stick around baseball for a while. He's not going to call it quits completely. No, he, he seems to be a guy who really, like, bleeds Yankee blood. So, I mean, you know, we really – I really think he's going to be around for a long time. And he's, he's one of those guys that played his entire career with the same team, which, as I've made known, that is unheard of in this that is unheard of in this day and age. NFL playoffs week three, was a, it was unbelievable. The New England Patriots and Baltimore Ravens did battle, but neither Tom Brady or Joe Flacco really showed that they deserved to be in the Super Bowl. Neither of them had a great game. Uh, Tom Brady, he only threw for 239 yards, two interceptions, which is unheard of for him. And he came out this week saying he's going to play 10 times better than that in the Super Bowl. And that's a large prediction. But, I mean, he is Tom Brady. He constantly finds a way to win. Um, but the thing that went wrong here for the Ravens, their defense amazing. But New England converted on all three field goal attempts, whereas Baltimore's kicker Billy Cundiff missed a key field goal in the fourth quarter. So uh, what, do you, what do you guys think went wrong other than that for the Ravens in this game today? Well, I mean, just, just uh, botching clutch plays the whole game. I mean, when you, if you came into the game and told Ray Lewis, if you hold – Tom Brady had no touchdown passes and two interceptions. I mean, he would think you were, he was going to win the game. Anyone would think that's yeah, gay. You're yeah, absolutely. Win. But uh, but the special teams let them down. The offense let them down. And really, the, the Ravens' defense, I think, comes away from this. You know, just say, how, how do we win? Do we need how, do we need to score touchdowns as well? I mean, it's just a they can't. Loss. I mean, they can't do it all. Joe Flacco's got to do something. I mean, yeah. three hundred six yards is a decent game, but still, he's got to do more than that. Uh, you know, Joe Flacco really didn't have a bad game. It was really, I was really uh, surprised that Ray Rice didn't have a bigger role to play in that offense. I true. Think, I think he did, really came up missing in that game. That's true. He didn't have that great of a game running. Now in the NFC, the New York Giants took care of the San Francisco 49ers, but this game, it took an overtime to decide this game. Shauna, I know you have something to say about this <laughs> since you're a diehard Giants fan. How did you know? <laughs> How did you know I was going to say something? Absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it was a great game, and that is what I call a football game. I mean, we went into overtime. We didn't know what was going to happen. Everybody, everybody was at the edge of their seat. You, everyone played hard. You got to love that Bradshaw. I mean, you absolutely have to love them. That team has heart, and I'm telling you, that is my prediction. New York Giants. Eli Manning had an incredible game. 316 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, he's, he's just playing on a whole nother level right now. And, you know, he gets banged up more than any quarterback I've seen. And he, he never – ESPN actually talked about it yesterday. He never even talks about it in the huddle. He never calls anyone out. So he's just a great leader to have on your team. And I think uh, they may repeat as Super Bowl champions. We'll just have to see. To the NCAA we go. NCAA basketball, number one ranked Syracuse gets knocked off by Notre Dame of all teams, who is unranked. And uh, Syracuse has come back fighting, though. They've beat Cincinnati right off the bat. Kentucky now ranked number one, which we have seen them in the number one rankings the past two years. Duke has bumped down to number six. Billy, uh, will Syracuse actually be atop the rankings at the end of the season? I mean, I don't know about the finals, but I believe by, by the end of the season they should be ranked number one again. They're a great team, great defensively. You know, the shots weren't falling against Notre Dame, and Notre Dame had a great home field advantage. They hit some shots that they hadn't hit in the past, and uh, they came up winners. And that's that's how you beat the two-three zone of Jim 
fan, how I miss it, is you, you hit threes and you really break down with good passing. That's what Notre Dame did all night. It really impressed me. It's definitely a big confidence booster for if you're Notre Dame because you're unranked, but you beat the number one ranked team in the nation. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty good stuff right there. Absolutely, especially after losing uh, Tim Abermanis to the to a season-ending injury earlier in the year. It's been a really tough year for them. They had a really good high expectations, but uh, to come out with this win was big for them. Now to take it down a little bit, Joe Paterno, the all-time winningest coach in college football history at 409 wins, 136 losses, passed away earlier this week after a long battle with lung cancer. There's been several ceremonies held in Penn State as well as uh, on the campus, in the gym, especially yesterday. Uh, his son spoke very deeply about him as well as former players, but uh, Joe Paterno's legacy is something that can never be touched. No one will ever do what Joe Paterno did, or Joe Pa as people call him, and uh, we, he will sorely be missed in college football as well as in the sports world in general. On to Federer and Nadal, the number two and number rank, I beg your pardon, Nadal is ranked number two, Federer now ranked number three in the nation in tennis. They did battle the other night, it was quite a match to watch. I actually woke up at 3.30, watched all four hours of this match, and they never disappoint, but this, Nadal has had Federer's number the past couple of years, and Federer didn't lose a match before this, except for the US Open, which was a long time ago. Yeah, it was, it was a big match. I was impressed by Nadal's shot making. Uh, he was uh, he almost outshot Federer. That's usually what usually you see Nadal with his amazing defense and Federer with just making up shots on the go. But this time uh, Nadal really blitzed Federer and really came out with the win in a very convincing fashion. It was very convincing, absolutely. Federer took the first set, but then Nadal split, swept the next three sets. I shouldn't say swept because Federer did give him a he did give him a battle. It was a game. It was unbelievable to watch. He gave him a run for his money. He absolutely did. And Federer, Federer's net game was not as well as it normally is. You know, he tried some finesse, but uh, it just didn't work for him, and the doll took it. So he's going to be playing Djokovic, and that's going to be quite a match to watch because Djokovic has had his number, and yep. Djokovic is ranked number one in the nation from Serbia. So you, it's – You don't beat Djokovic. He's, you really uh, don't. Not he, at this point. No. Nope. Not at this point. It's, it's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, we'll see. Australian Open. The New York Giants and New England Patriots will play each other for the second time in four years. The Giants came out on top in 2008, but what, what's going to happen for the Patriots in this one? Tom Brady's really looking to have a great game after these last two playoff games. Eli Manning, though, at the top of his game right now. Anyone can win this game. It's it's pretty even matchup because, you know, Tom Coughlin, unbelievable coach, and it's just uh, the New York Giants, I really think they have this one, but... Uh, what do you guys think? What are your predictions for this Super Bowl? Yeah, I think the Patriots have to uh, have to get Tom Brady to get Gronkowski and uh, Gonzalez involved or Hernandez involved, excuse me, uh, to really have a shot in this game. I, mean, I think the tight ends are the key, and then maybe a little West Welker sprinkling, and I think that'll be the recipe that the Patriots will use to beat the Giants. From a skill level perspective, I agree with you. Both teams, it is pretty much even killed, but you know, as long as the Giants just stay on that momentum and they just ride that out, then they are my pick again. I'll say it. The champion. Well, that's all we have this week on Outside the Box. Tune in next week as we're going to talk a little bit more about Super Bowl predictions. Who knows what's going to happen in the MLB? NBA is going to be some great games. Lakers are sure to play somebody. The Clippers and Lakers are actually going to do battle this week, so we're going to see what happens there. But keep it tuned. As always, I'm Ben Poplin. Thank you for watching Outside the Box.